This is Sobin Bharti and we are here at Open Suze Conference in Nuremberg, Germany. And today we have with us Florian Effenberger. You are Executive Director of the Document Foundation. So first of all, Florian, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? Fine. We have great conference. The weather is amazing. Finally, it's getting spring. Nice people around. We're having a good time. So really, really happy to be here. Perfect. Let's talk about the Document Foundation. I have been covering, uh, actually even on Wikipedia, if you go, you know, I was the first one who, who talked to Italo when the foundation was formed and everything. So I've been tracking the foundation for very long, since the early days. So give us a, an update, what's going on with foundation now? Just, you know, the state of the affairs, yeah. Happy to. So many things are happening. We just a few weeks ago finalized our annual report for the previous year, where we sum up all the activities. And for us, this is always an incredible moment because there's a worldwide community and with some of them you're connected closer, you're in regular interaction and others geographically distant, you're in not so regular contact or the, the base language is different than, than English. And that time of the year always shows us what is going on around the globe and there is, there is so much. We, I think we have like 50 pages or more of content what has been happening and at the moment we publish that bit by bit on our blog. And of course, there's the software that is published regularly. There are projects, there are events that took place. We have hackfests, we have conferences, we have community events where we invite community members, where we share knowledge. There have been tenders. So a lot of things are happening. TDF, since it has been established seven years ago, has grown a lot. The user base has grown, the contributor base has grown. So for us, it's a success story. It's, it's lots of things that are happening. And it's um, first and foremost an, an incredible community around the world that is doing lots of incredible things with volunteers, with ecosystem, with other contributors, with donors, a strong support. So we are, we are pretty happy about the state we're in. You mentioned users and user base is growing. So tell us about who is using uh, LibreOffice. So for LibreOffice, it's interesting because both the potential contributor base as well as the user base is rather large. If you have a very specific piece of software, like you have a web server, then the, the user base is limited because not every home user runs a web server. For an office suite, you have home users writing the letters, you have large enterprises, you have governments using the software, and that's with LibreOffice. So uh, we do see around the globe a broad user base from small home users uh, up to really uh, large organizations. Just recently in, in, in Germany, the uh, city of Dortmund, for example, is investigating in a working group going free software, going open standards. LibreOffice is an important part of that. We are in interaction, so I'm, of course, particularly happy to see in, in my home country things progressing here. So it's a, it's a broad user base, and uh, that's, that's good because you see that where you contribute to, what you do, is used by so many people around the globe and by such a diverse set of, of people and end users. Let's just talk about LibreOffice for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the project started as, you know, kind of fork of open office, uh, and, uh, but the times have changed. Now most people use mobile devices. Most people also do their computing online, so online offices Indeed. are there. So talk about the evolution of LibreOffice uh, as the users are using uh, a product suit in a different way. So there is, of course, the desktop version, which is still the, the main software that is put to the market. And there is lots of improvements going on there, like usability, there is uh, new user interfaces coming up, uh, new icon sets, so optimizing the menus, we invest a lot in to improving that. And of course, there is, as you say, new devices. There is the, the online world is collaborating on documents, working together on documents at the same time, editing, change tracking. Uh, there's, there's mobile devices. There's lots of work going on. And LibreOffice and, and TDF don't stand just by themselves, but there's an ecosystem around providing services and, and support. And uh, exactly there, we have also LibreOffice Online, which is the, the online component. That is not so much for the end user to download and install, but it's more targeted, like if you're in an enterprise, deploy it to your own system, you need a uh, file storage, you need a user database to attach to that. So there's, there's some more, but if you look at the website, you can download the source code, uh, you can look into it. There is a, a instance you can run to test to, to sound it out. 
But the online component is, of course, targeted towards a, a slightly different user base because you just don't install it on your on a local machine. But the idea behind that is indeed that the document rendering is the same, that you can see the same documents, that you have similar functionality, you work jointly on the documents, and that can all be integrated into your existing solution, into your existing user authentication, your file storage, to extend the desktop version. So. The, the desktop version is there, and I don't think it will vanish soon, but it's extended by more functionality, by uh, more ways of accessing your documents, of sharing documents, and LibreOffice Online is, is one part, and that is available in, in various uh, offerings that uh, you can uh, subscribe to that you can uh, consult people on. The source code is available. There's uh, test instance to play with. So uh, there is an online component. Um, there's more work uh, being brought forward. Just recently, there was uh, the um, iOS version announced that is done by by uh, ecosystem partners investing into that, working with that, bringing forward LibreOffice to uh, Apple devices. And so this, this is growing, this is extending because it's an important market and it's an important user base and more and more users, especially the younger generation these days, does stuff more online or from their tablet than rather with a, with a, a classical machine. Right. So it is evolving with the with the changing usage patterns also. Yes, okay. yes, indeed. Uh, but if I'm not wrong, you know, I mean, LibreOffice is, you know, the project that you manage but you're, you also do a lot of other community activities as well. Indeed. So talk about that, those activities. So the, the most prominent project at the Document Foundation, of course, is LibreOffice. But as a part of LibreOffice or a, a component of LibreOffice, there is, for example, the Document Liberation Project. That is not so much end-user facing. It is filters primarily to import your legacy file formats from old and unsupported software. Like you have that very old disk from your old machine with, with software that doesn't exist anymore, but you want to have access to your data. And with the Document Liberation Project, providing filters, you can import those documents and move to the open document format. And um, the good news is that it's not only a part of LibreOffice, but it's used in other software. Scribos, Inkscape, they make use of that. A couple of other products use those free libraries to enable the users to read their documents. So. In the, in the true open source sense, we share what we do. Others can benefit from that, can use that, can contribute to that. And of course, it's not just about the coding and the software. That there's much more. You have marketing, you have localization, you have documentation, and many other key areas, quality assurance, just to name a few, that is important for TDF. And so these are areas that we do a lot. So localization means people can use the software in their native language. They are not bound to English, but they can use it in, in their very own language. They feel more at home. They have access to that technology. That is key. By documenting, we enable people to understand how the software works and also how the code works. Like, how can I contribute? How does that work? You, you transfer knowledge. You can share the knowledge with others and make them contributors, for example. And just recently, and interestingly, Around this weekend, lots of activities took place. So two weeks ago, we had a German community meeting in the city of Essen. And this weekend, where we are here in Nuremberg at the OpenSUSE conference, in parallel in Tokyo, the LibreOffice Asia conference takes place with several people outside Asia joining that and sharing what's going on and, and taking back feedback from the Asian community and just exchanging thoughts and ideas presenting what the local communities do. Uh, in parallel, there is a, uh, yesterday actually, there was a meeting in Valencia in Spain with the Spanish community. So we do outreach, we try to share what we do, encourage people to join us, share the knowledge, outline what the next steps are, uh, be around, have, have people you can meet, you can talk to. And that's a, a crucial part as well. So the software is of course one element, but those whole community activities, how to, get there, how to have the code, how to have the marketing, the localization, documentation, that is key to us because we are indeed a worldwide community and we, we try to foster that as much as we can. So a lot of that is actually taking place these days and we look forward to an exciting conference in September that takes place in Almeria in Spain, which is our annual gathering. Like here the, the OpenSUSE conference is, I assume, the main gathering for the OpenSUSE community and for us it's the LibreOffice conference that takes place once a year. 
the next one is in Spain. So we also, we start working on that because it needs preparation time. And actually we can't wait to see each other again and, and work on, on the thing that is so important to us. So uh, who's the conference targeted at? Who, who, who do you invite or who should come to the conference? The answer is very easy, everyone. So it's a, a conference for users, for contributors, for developers, we have various tracks, more technical ones, more marketing oriented ones. So for us, the LibreOffice conference is the annual gathering where we meet the full community. People fly in a long distance to be around, to share what they do. So it's not only focused on development, it's not only focused on other areas, it's really a good mixture exchange of thoughts. So everyone who is interested in the free office space, in LibreOffice in particular, in the open document format, is very much welcome at the conference. And it's an important and a really fun event to be there. Since, uh, as you mentioned, you know, that the Document Foundation is as much about people as it's about software. It's actually more about people, yeah. actually. Uh, these days, when you look at open source communities, not open source community, but science and tech in general, mm -hmm. one thing that we, uh, it's becoming a very important topic, that is diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, because the way our society is built, you know, it's biased, you know, towards <laughs> yes. So, first of all, uh, what is your opinion about diversity and inclusion? I think it's very important. So, I always, say that open source is not just a development model or a licensing model, it's really the way you think, the way you interact. And I, I said before that we are a worldwide community and that means you have people around the world with completely different backgrounds, cultures, languages, completely different histories. And this is to me one of the most exciting parts about being active in an open source community, that you meet people, that you become actually friends with people who are completely different than you, from a completely different country, have a completely different background and you get, it's not always easy of course because you, you have to leave your known past, you learn new stuff, but on the other hand you can massively widen your view. So understanding each other, trying to get where the other is coming from, what they, what they mean, what their motives are, how they feel about certain things, how they react to certain things. And that the world is not just your country or your local area that you know, that you're used to, that's your comfort zone, is, is really important. And we see that. I'm, I'm really personally truly honored to be part of that, to really have friends around the world with whom I can talk, exchange. You get completely new insight. And that also means you have to accept and include people who are simply different. May it be the way they look, the way they interact, the, the, their opinions. You have to at least appreciate the opinions. You might not share them all of the time, but it's the same in, in a smaller scale. Even in the same country, people have different opinions. But if you are worldwide, it's of course even more different because of the different backgrounds. And that's one of the things that's a true blessing that you have that diversity, but you also need to, to learn because in the beginning it's new for everyone. It's just new. You have to adapt, you have to learn, you have to mutually learn. And for us, it's very important. In uh, Tirana at our last conference, we had a specific workshop on that topic to discuss it. It's of course a long discussion. It's a, a long or a complicated topic to actually uh, how to handle that, how to address it, what does that mean? But the, the good thing is people are very open. People are really open-minded in, in a really friendly environment and trying to understand the other, trying to get rid of confirmation bias and all those things that you might have. So it's a very important topic uh, to us and to me personally too. It's, it's good to hear that because uh, and uh, the more we are aware about it, but the more we talk about it, uh, because especially in open source world, I have seen every time I talk about diversity, I get a pushback, you know, so, so but yeah. that actually, you know, instead of discouraging me, it actually inspires me to, to I, I, I ignore all the negativity because you can pick and choose your fights. Yeah. So you can either engage with the negative comments or you can just keep doing the good work. So I choose to, you know, just talk positively about it. Indeed. So, so Indeed. once again, Florian, thanks for talking to me. Thanks and a lot. I, I look forward that, you know, I'll try my best to come to attend the event. It would uh, be wonderful to see you there, indeed. Yeah, indeed. and that would be exciting to talk to all those, you know, developers, uh, users, yeah. and all those, you know, core people who are building this awesome community. So once again, thanks, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much. <laughs>